Let's go to the worrying situation in Victoria now, and I'm joined by the Shadow Police Minister, David Southwick. Thanks for joining us, David. Good to talk to you again. First up, what really worries me about what's happening in Victoria is the uh, infections across a number of aged care homes. The government's now set up an emergency response centre for aged care homes. This seems to me to be very late. Back in February, we knew that it was the aged that were particularly vulnerable. Uh, many people saying from the outset that the number one priority in fighting this pandemic should have been to uh, isolate and protect aged care institutions. Yeah, look, you're right, Chris. Uh, we knew all along that it was the elderly that were going to be vulnerable here. And we've just seen, again, a, a poorly managed system by this government. Uh, we have called today uh, for the ability for those people that... Uh, that are vulnerable, those people that are testing positive, to have the ability to have them taken out of these facilities. Uh, the, there has not been enough protective uh, equipment, uh, protective gear for many of the staff. And one of the big issues is we've got many staff that have been working from one facility to the next, uh, which has, of course, had that uh, spread of the virus. Uh, again, too little too late here. Uh, the Premier has not been quick enough to act on this. And again, the consequences, unfortunately, is the uh, is what we're reading about uh, today. Well, that, I mean, it's such a worry, as you say, uh, if the workers are going between aged care facilities, that's an obvious weakness uh, in the system. Are you satisfied with uh, federal involvement there now and an emergency response group that they can beef up the quarantining and isolation and, and hygiene procedures around aged care homes? Look, we've just got to get on top of this, Chris. Uh, Victorians are really scared right now, uh, and rightly so. Uh, and when you're seeing the, the kinds of deaths and, and the p potential of not being able to contain uh, the virus within these facilities and have them spread to the most vulnerable, uh, it's just it's not good enough. I mean, I've had situations where people have contacted me, they haven't been able to see a loved one, and, uh, and unfortunately, the, uh, that, that person has passed. Uh, there has not been the, the management here that's been in place. It needs to be a better way of being able to tackle this. And, um, and Andrews has just been late to the game in every instance here. He has not uh, taken on the, uh, the, the support that's been offered to him. Uh, and I would say, you know, I would plead to Daniel Andrews today, please uh, listen to your federal counterparts, listen to uh, other states and other territories and the way they've done this. We've, we've, we've been OK in Victoria when we've acted uh, along the National Cabinet with other states and territories. Every time Daniel Andrews has gone off and done things on his own accord, we've fallen behind. Uh, there's lack of consistency. People are confused. And unfortunately, the consequences are the escalating numbers that we're all reading about now. Look, we've talked previously about the problems in Victoria, the mixed messaging about whether or not people mm. should be isolating while they're awaiting test results. That's been cleared up, I suppose. Yes, yes, isolate until you get the results back. But the real weakness being borne out again today is the delays in Victoria in getting test results. It's very difficult to get people to keep isolating if they're waiting four, five, six days to get test results. Well, that's one huge problem in terms of the time. And I've had many uh, different doctors and, and, and health professionals contact me with other ways and, and better testing kits that be able to give you re results a lot quicker. And we've pushed them up the line. But the problem is, Chris, uh, getting a response back from the minister uh, or from the department is just too little too late. It takes a long time to get any answers uh, and it's just not good enough. The other issue is the mixed messaging around whether people should get tested. And then when they turn up for a test, uh, in many cases, they're still being turned away to say they don't have symptoms. Uh, I've had people come to me and, and say, we've been queuing, we've queued for 40, 50 mi minutes at a centre, only to be turned away no, afterwards. You've got to test anyone Not who wants enough. it. Just quickly, in your own police yeah. portfolio, two issues, David Southwick. Firstly, yeah. uh, prisoners uh, having their sentences reduced because of coronavirus lockdowns. Is, is this a problem? A huge problem. So what we had is six facilities locked down because we had, it's very similar to the aged care facilities, we had, uh, we had prison uh, officers going from one facility to the next, six locked down, and for every day a prisoner has been locked down, the government gives them four days off their sentence, a four-day get-out-of-jail card off their sentence. Now... Certainly, I can tell you, Victorians that have been locked down, including 
those people locked down in the commission flats for 14, 15 days at a time, they weren't given anything uh, as far, far as their, their, their effective their sentence was concerned. No consistency here. And I think certainly a lot of Victorians would be very angry right now where they see prisoners being treated better than most Victorians at the moment. Just on the other issue of compulsory mask wearing, we've seen some horrible clashes with people taking it out on shop assistants and police. Uh, even if you're sceptical about how broad the uh, compulsory mask edict is, surely you would be calling on all people to adhere to the law and certainly not take it out on police officers or, or, uh, or shop assistants who are just trying to enforce what is the rule for public health. You're absolutely correct, Chris. These people are fools. Uh, at the end of the day, our Victoria Police are doing the very best they can at keeping, it, keeping us all safe. And the last thing that they need are these idiots coming around and testing them and playing games with everybody's safety. Wear a mask. It's very, very simple. This is our last chance to, uh, to stop us from going yet to another stage of completely locking down the state and ruining businesses and causing more lives to be lost. It's very, very simple. We shouldn't have got to this point. We all know that. We all understand the government's completely failed. But at the end of the day, our only way forward is all Victorians to come together as a community, do the right thing, wear a mask and cooperate with Victoria Police that are doing a really tough job at a very, very difficult time. Spot on. Thanks for joining us, David. Pleasure. Have a good evening. David Southwick there, who's the opposition shadow uh, for police in Victoria. I've got to say, getting test results quickly is vital here. I had personal experience about a week ago with one of our little fellas, a bit of a cough. We thought we'd better do the right thing, get a test for him, I think, uh, late on a Sunday morning, ready to keep him home from school out of all precaution on Monday. Monday morning, crack a dawn, text message, clear off you go. This is what people need, quick tests so they know when to isolate.